from stress to success, five mindful practices to living a happier life, right? We had really lived by these practices. It's an aspect of life, but it isn't truth. The power of pausing, even if it's only for one second, is a magical thing. We can use that as the springboard or the launch pad to get us moving forward and into the next level of where we desire to be. Positivity rules. It is an opportunity for me to redirect my thoughts. Just because you are happy doesn't mean you're always 100% in that state of just pure happiness. There are ebbs and flows to life. We have had so much stress going on recently with all of the travel and all of the different things. And so I had to go back in our arsenal and pull out the five mindful practices to go from stress to success. So it was from stress to success, five mindful practices to living a happier life, right? We had really lived by these practices, but then, you know, life gets in the way. Yes. And we're not, just because you are happy doesn't mean you're always 100% in that state of just pure happiness. There are ebbs and flows to life. And so these practices are designed to help us when we feel like we're in either the ebb or the flow or <laughs> however it is uh, to get us back in. So Yeah. Yes. And even when you're in the flow, yes. it's still important yes. to maintain that. And I feel like that's mm -hmm. what we forget. And even I forget, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like riding the wave <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I've got this. Mm -hmm. And in true surf fashion is like, that's when you crash. <laughs> yeah. Big wave hits. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, okay. So we have to be willing to get back out there and do the basics again sometimes. And not all five of these are basics, but we have to be willing to get out there and hit it and implement these into our daily lives. Yes. Right. And it's not like a once and done. Like we all want that magic pill, right? That gives us that, oh, I do this once. And suddenly my whole life is happy, but that's not how it works. We have to be willing to practice it. And when we get knocked off of that happiness wave, be willing to say, all right, well, I wasn't practicing. Here we go again. Yeah. So for me, the very first easy to hit, I would call it like a three out of 10 on the easiness factor is positivity rules, right? It is an opportunity for me to redirect my thoughts when and understand and embrace positivity and put positivity everywhere around me. Um, even the shirt I'm wearing now, because recently I fell off my surfboard <laughs> of happiness, <laughs> yep. and wear clothes that have positive statements on it, like the shirt I have on underneath this jacket is asking me, what is the most loving thing I can do right now? And so when I look at myself in the mirror, I have to remember, what is the most loving thing I can do right now? Mm. That's a positivity statement that is right there. Mm -hmm. Surrounding myself with positive people. Key element, right? If you have negative Nellies all around you, that's what my son and I call them, mm -hmm. then it's going to tear you down. But if you have positive people, who are uplifting you in your life, then that's going to make it all the more positive for you and uplift your happiness. Yes. I, I love that. It's, it's important to remember that it's always a wave. It could be a wave of negativity. It could be a wave of positivity, right? Right. And so which one do we want to ride? And which one do we want to not crash into us? <laughs> um, but I might, I might enjoy a, a wave of positivity crashing into me. But uh, that's that that can't can't be too bad. But uh, yeah, I think that's it's so key when we do feel stressed. It it might be an opportunity to to remember, you know, hey, maybe I am focused more on the neg negativity than the positivity right now, because it's really hard to be overly stressed and super positive. And so that's I feel like that kind of maybe as a, as a trigger point and a reminder, like when we are feeling that, okay, one, allow ourselves to, and then 
get into that positivity, remind ourselves, okay, as you're saying, is it the friends and family that are positive? Is it the shirts that we're wearing? You know, is it you know, just taking a moment with our, with one, you know, our dog or our cat, or it's just something that just gives us that joy of positivity, you know, just walking into the door and just so much happiness and wiggles and, you know, all the good stuff, right? Yeah. Um, you know, is it a food that just puts me in a good mood that I'm just like, yes, like this is, you know, I've been waiting all day for this. And this is, you know, having a really good bowl of soup on a cold day. It's just like awesome. You know, it's something simple like that. We tend to want to overcomplicate positivity. And the reality is that positivity can be small. It can be simple. It can be whatever it is. The important, the important part is just the focus of it. Right. And seeding it throughout your yes. day. Yes. Right. That's another thing that mm. I know I didn't do was I got so focused on other things that I wasn't seeding positivity throughout my day, even if it was programming it to pop up on my phone, mm -hmm. like taking a picture of you and my amazing son mm -hmm. doing like I have photos of all of us doing goofy things like racing cars or doing crazy things mm -hmm. and just having that pop up. Mm -hmm at random times of the day and or my son making a goofy face mm -hmm. you know yeah. it just makes my heart happy yeah. and having that momentary break of looking and going oh that's so awesome isn't my life awesome i have these wonderful moments then positivity starts to seep in and i have that positivity rules in my heart and I rem the happiness just starts to take over my day. Mm -hmm. So positivity rules <laughs> is a very key tip yeah. in redirecting to happiness. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and one last thing on that is that it could be a song. It could be, you know, what positive song gets you, gets you going and excited and makes you want to dance or gets you just happy um, or is tied to a happy memory. You know, uh, or, you know, maybe a podcast centered around positivity that's really designed for us. A lot of podcasts out there. There's books that are all about this. So we have a plethora of opportunity relative to positivity, even in a world that seems like there's so much negativity. And the news is constantly telling us how much negativity is in it. And I'm not saying it's not easy. I'm not saying that it's, it does feel a little bit like a fight. Mm -hmm. And then we have our own days and we feel stressed and we feel like we haven't gotten enough sleep or, you know, we're not enough or no one's seeing us or no one's hearing us. Yeah, it feels overwhelming. But that's where these little nuggets of positivity can come in, as you're beautifully saying, and be seated throughout the day to remind us of the truth. Because this negativity isn't necessarily the truth. It's an aspect of life, but it isn't truth. Yeah. and. I'm going to share just a little bit here because ultimately there are lots of different things that can knock us off of our happiness yeah. path, right? And for me, I recently, when we came back from South America, mm -hmm. I was not physically feeling well. Mm -hmm. And I have had so many times in my life where that has been the case. Mm -hmm. um, and part of the reason that I have these in my arsenal the things that we're talking about and we sat and we chatted about, okay, what are we going to, what are we going to talk about? How do we trim the tools that we have down to five, number one? <laughs> and what are we going to talk about with them is because, you know, I've had a navigation through cancer in my life. And for anybody out there who is either right now going through cancer or knows someone who's going through cancer, it is not easy to have positivity rules in your mind frame because you kind of feel like everything sucks, mm -hmm. right? It sucks that you have it. It sucks that the person that you love has this, any kind of sickness, whether it's cancer or not. And when I came back and I was sick, I was like, man, this sucks. Like we just had this amazing adventure and here I am, I'm sick. And it reminded me of how I felt in these other times when I was so sick. Mm. And it's like, how can I be positive when my body doesn't feel well, when I don't feel like moving forward and all I want to do is curl up in a ball? But let me tell you, that's when you need to be positive the most. 
as hard as it is and as challenging as it is to redirect your thoughts or find positive things because redirecting our thoughts is another step, right? Mm -hmm. It's when we need to do it the most because our body needs us and our, our soul needs us to know that there is this beauty that's happening in our lives, that there is so much positive energy around us that that's going to lift us up and actually nurture us. And we're going to heal faster. We're going to feel more vibrant as a result. Because if we let everything else weigh us down, then all of a sudden we give in to the pain. We give in to the sickness and it starts to win. Mm. And we don't need to be a victim to anything. We can uh, allow ourselves to choose, as you said, the song. I always have a healing and happiness playlist. Mm. Right. Nice. Mm -hmm. And so when I really do get to the point where I'm like, this sucks, which it happens, then I pull out that healing and happiness playlist and I listen to those empowering songs mm -hmm. to have that positivity. So, you know, for anyone out there who's navigating something like that, it doesn't matter what kind of sickness, it doesn't matter what's pushing you down, you know, fight back. Play back and find positivity. I think that beautifully flows into uh, our next one, which is catch and redirect. One of the quick ways to get into negativity is to blame others, right? Yeah. It's, it's easy because when life sucks and, and we're not feeling our best and the last thing we want to do is blame ourselves, right? I mean, that's, that's not fun. That just adds to the, the pile, if you yeah. will. Um, and so... Learning how to catch and redirect, catch ourselves from blaming others or comparing ourselves to others, whatever is going on, um, whether it's another friend uh, who actually finds success in the thing that you're looking for success in, or you see other people and you're like, how are they even like, it doesn't seem like they're doing anything. And then they're, you know, they're reaching success. Like, well, why am I not? You know, and so it's like comparing or or blaming, like, oh, if, if I just didn't have these people in my life, in, in my life, then you know, then I would be whatever, you know, fill in the blank. Um, this catch and redirect, that's that's why this is so so key because it does it is stressful. It's very very stressful when we start to look outside of ourselves and compare. And so if we can catch ourselves when we do that it's normal we're never not going to 100 percent not compare ourselves right yeah. there are benefits to comparison in some degrees and we've talked about that in other podcasts in this one specific i really want to focus on catching why it's so important for us to catch ourselves when we are comparing others and instead redirect into what it is that we are doing that is empowering for ourselves because there's always something that we are doing to improve. There's something that we can pull back in the last day, in the last week, in the last month that we did well, that we can build on. We can use that as the springboard or the launch pad to get us moving forward and into the next level of where we desire to be without feeling like it's someone else determining our way of life or our experiences in life. Absolutely. And one of the things I found with catch and redirect mm -hmm. is I know like attracts like, right? Mm. So like energy attracts like energy. If I am envious of someone else's success, then I'm going to spend forever having my others around me being envious if I am ever successful instead of happy and supportive. Mm. And so if there's ever a moment where my ego goes, hello, I wanted that and somebody else got it and I find myself in that cycle, then what I can do and catch and redirect is go, wait a second and ask myself, how would I want someone to respond if I was the one who just got that? Mm. 
Mm. If I had actually achieved that success, because one day I will, one day it will be me. And so how will I desire my friends or individuals who don't know me at all? Mm. How would I desire them to feel when I get there? Nice. And so if I want like to attract like, then I need to be the one to hold the energy for that other person. And I need to truly be happy for them. How can I do that? And then I have to start asking myself, if right now I don't feel truly happy for them and what I actually feel is envious, Mm -hmm. then I have to ask myself why. And that's where another practice we have, which is the five whys, at least five whys could Mm -hmm. be seven, Mm -hmm. however many it takes to get to the root. But like, why am I so envious of that? And if it gets down to, I feel like I earned it, then, well, if I actually earned it, I would have been the one receiving it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a huge ego opportunity for me, which is likely why I haven't earned it yet. Mm -hmm. So let me figure out what I need to do between the gap of where my ego perceives I am and where I actually am, Mm. and then be happy for the person who's moved through that part of their ego and actually achieved that result. Might not be today. (laughs) Probably won't be today if my ego is still a little sore, but at least I've made the strides toward getting there, right? Which then will give me happiness knowing I have a resolution. I love that. Hey, thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. I'm Austin, co-host here at the Heart Leader Podcast with Amber. And if you haven't already, please take a quick moment to like and subscribe below. It helps us know we're making amazing content that you enjoy. And thank you for your support. We'll see you in the community. Back to the show. And you hit on a really source issue there with, you know, if we, if we are unable to be happy for others, then how are we going to be happy for ourselves? And vice versa in that sense, right? Yeah. So there is a, it's not just a one, one way which creates the other. There is, a, there is a tie. Just like anything, there's a two-way street with that. And so I feel like that's such a, such a key point is a lot of these things occur as results of the energy or the mind frame or um, the abundance factor that we're in. And so if we choose to be abundant, for example, and we're in that love and we're in that kindness towards others and support of others and to ourselves, then the results will occur for us and those around. And that's where we can build and grow and and compound. Yeah. You know, individuals talk about the power of manifestation, right? And that is truly the power of manifestation. Yeah. Awesome. And it really drives toward number three, which is power pause. Mm -hmm. I call it the power pause. Yes. Because ultimately, in order to get to a point where I can ask myself the whys and I can recognize my ego and I can navigate back into that happiness, I can get back on my board to get back to the happiness wave. I have to be willing to pause and catch, do the catch and redirect and do these other things. So they all integrate together. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, the power of pausing, even if it's only for one second, is a magical thing because we are so trained in this instant society that we're creating to just like instantaneously respond, 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 which is truly not responding. It's reacting, right? Yes. And when you take that one second, I mean, think about it. One second is not that long, but in your neural pathways, it is, it really is. So if you can just breathe for one second, take one inhale, like I'm not asking for a lot of my time. I'm asking for one inhale before I engage in something, then it gives me the opportunity to start to ask myself these questions or start to understand what feelings are firing in me before I take an action. Because when it comes to my own forward movement toward happiness, 
I don't want to say something I'm going to regret and have to take back later. And let's face it, you cannot take back what has been spoken. Once it is out there, it is out there. The worms are spread all over the floor, right? (laughs) You cannot get that back in. So take that moment to pause and understand going back to being happy for someone else, right? Mm -hmm. It would really suck if I was triggered and I walked up to somebody I cared about and said, it should have been me. Like I think about Sheldon off of the Big Bang, right? He's like the epitome. (laughs) Yes. So I want to make sure that I'm taking that time. Mm -hmm. I like that. There really such there is such power in pause. It is amazing. And it's, we underestimate the value of that second when collecting our thoughts, when collecting our emotions, when actually almost calibrating to our emotional states and that we're feeling. And so oftentimes when we do say something just reactively, it's not even what we actually mean. Mm -hmm. It's not what we actually feel. It's something we're pulling that we might we might pull from outside of ourselves that we might pull from you know it might be an experience it doesn't mean that's actually where we're at and those are very very different things and how much how how often does miscommunication occur because we're not allowing that one second pause how many arguments how many misunderstandings how, many, how much of a disconnection is being created just because of our lack of ability to manage one second of our time? I agree. Yeah. And when we say pause, we're not talking like a five-minute pause in the middle of a conversation <laughs> because, well, when you're first starting out, maybe you do need five minutes, right? Maybe you need to tell people that you're talking to, hey, I need to take a pause. And if you need five minutes, take five minutes. Now, it might throw people you're talking to off. So maybe you let them know I need an extended pause. Mm -hmm. But however long it takes you, let it take you that long, right? But over time, it's going to get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And often all it takes is that one to three breaths to collect yourself. And that's where the practice really takes hold. And as I'm, as we're talking through this, I'm like, you know what, if I were listening to this, what would really help me is having a PDF download Mm -hmm. of all of these, you know, we know them because we practice them in daily life. So if I'm new to this, I would love to have a PDF. So what we'll do is we'll make certain if you go out to the YouTube version of this, any versions will just be, we'll put it in the description below. So whether it's an audio or video, you can just, uh, we'll put the link first. Perfect. Yeah. We'll do it that way. Oh, it's a great idea. And you can just download all of these for free in yeah. a PDF format with some description and some practices on it. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. One thing I do want to say with the pause that is something that you've helped me sometimes is for those who are visually seeing, um, when we put up one finger. Like not your middle finger for reference of those who are on audio. <laughs> that's a different kind of pause that we're not. Then that's more of Don't a negative pause, <laughs> a positive pause. Just like the one, kind of like when you're like, oh, one minute or one second. Um, I'm attempting to paint picture for those listening because um, it's it's sometimes it's hard to even say like I'm pausing. And there's so maybe there's so and I know I struggle with this. There's so many thoughts going in when something occurs that kind of throws me off. And I freeze a little bit and I'm just like, you know, there's so many, like, how do I think, you know, what do I want to say? What's, and so just, and I even forget to just say, Hey, I need a moment to pause or like pausing. Um, And so just throwing up kind of just the one finger pause, like, you know, one moment and you don't even have to say it just to give you that couple of seconds actually could be a wonderful visual, positive visual trigger in in this kind of in this situation so that the other individual knows what's going on. And so that's just another way to do it. Yeah. And it's been helpful for me as the receiver of the visual cue mm-hmm. 
to know as well. Because ultimately, yes, when all of a sudden we're in the middle of a discussion and you forget to verbally cue me in that you're pausing and I am like, why did you go radio silent on me? Then you slowly put up a finger. (laughs) I'm like, okay, I get it now. I get it. There's so much kind of just running through your head and running through your heart that you just need a moment to collect it. So I I always appreciate when I get a, at least a visual cue if a verbal cue cannot come forward because there's just so much data processing. So whatever it takes, it's just making certain that you have a way of communicating it. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. And the benefit is while someone is waiting for you to come collect collect your thoughts, uh, you know, you're you're letting them know they're number one. Exactly. So it's kind of perfect. <laughs> the reason I'm doing this is because you're <laughs> number one. You're number one. <laughs> I love that. All right. So tip number four is all about time management, right? When we're talking about getting into a state of happiness and staying on that wave, mm-hmm. it is about time knowing the skill of time management because when you don't understand how your day is going to flow then suddenly your day starts beating the crap out of you like we're going to keep the surfer analogy going on right getting battered around by the waves instead of timing your approach to the waves right and so taking just a few moments before woo Taking just a few moments before you set out on the day, preferably the night before, if you can, right? Really looking at what you have coming up and just planning out how it's going to flow, how you're going to come at that and understanding like life happens. Let's face it. It's not always going to go exactly how you plan it to go, but If you have an approach where it's like, okay, if something comes up, what can shift in my day? What absolutely cannot shift in my day? And what do I get really excited about doing? And what am I not that excited about, but I know needs to happen? Mm -hmm. And how can I still bring joy into what I'm not that excited about, but still needs to happen? And how can I still carve out time for self care? or some kind of joyful practice in between all of that so that it's not batting you around like a cat and a mouse, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the best times to do that is kind of at night, maybe before bed, when things are calmed down from the day. It's typically a time where our body's more in a relaxed space. Mm -hmm. We're kind of through the stress of the day, right? And it's a way to look forward without feeling anxious or stressed as well. And because when we wake up in the morning, we know we have a lot going on. It's really easy to like, boom, like, oh, I've got so much. And then I don't know. I need to figure out what I need to do. And then I don't know what I need to do. And then we miss things. And then then that creates more stress and then blah, blah, blah. So if we can really be in that positive, relaxed, calm state in the evening and we set our, our goals and our flow for the next day, as you're saying, that also allows us to to really intentionally do what we need to do the next day, causing a lot less time for franticness and anxiousness and like we're missing things and then compounding and then feeling overwhelmed and all these things. It really gets us in a flow. So the next day we wake up, we know exactly for the most part wh- what's going to occur that day and how we're going to do it and when so that we can just kind of move forward. Now, Things are some things are out of our control, if you will. Of course, there's going to be traffic that we don't anticipate. There's going to be phone calls that we don't anticipate. Things are going to happen, and so that's why you saying, okay, how do I? What can be moved around and what can't? And so that then we don't have to frank, frantically feel like we need to uh, adjust something without any awareness. It's like, okay, well, I've already got a plan for that. So uh, that's what I, I love. This is just really hones in on how to shift from living in stress to living in success. Success is all about intention and planning 
and being aware of what to do next. And so it's, I mean, granted, some success is, you know, like, oh, I didn't see that coming. That's awesome. Yeah. And, you know, but a lot of success. And, and we've, we've been fortunate to talk to a lot of successful people in very different, in different ways. And almost none of them are overnight successes, even though to everyone else, it looks like it. Mm-hmm. It's years and years and years of planning and execution and adapting and execution and moving forward. And it just, it might look like an overnight success to someone else, but to them, it's years and years of dedication and intentional, purposeful goals. Yeah. And focus, right? Yeah. Knowing what you desire and planning around that focus and that desire. And as you said, when we come at that from a calm place and not a frantic place, then it allows us to strive toward that happiness, right? Because again, there's going to be things in our day that we're not that jonesed about doing. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that we can't place happiness and joy into that, Mm -hmm. right? Like it's not my favorite thing to do during the day to take out Crash and clean up after Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Bruce Wayne is our dog. <laughs> like, there are happier tasks that I have during the day, but there are ways to infuse happiness into that. Putting on that music, that playlist, that happiness playlist, right? And listening to that while I'm doing those tasks. I know that they're on my calendar. I know that I need to do them, but what can I do to lift them up a little bit? That's time management. I know that they're on my list. I know that I need to do them and I can pre-plan how I'm going to make certain that I don't increase my overall cortisol level of stress pre-planning those and thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to do this. I don't want to do this. I can find a way to bring joy into it knowing that it's on my calendar. I love that. Before we belabor this one too much, I Uh do want to add one more thing to it. and just kind of piggyback off of what you're saying. Um, when you can do this, especially when you've got a, a partner um, that you are living with, one of my favorite things is like the night before, we'll say, hey, I'm going to do the dishes tomorrow in the morning. And so it's just that one little thing. And I know it sounds, maybe it sounds trivial, but it's a way to kind of pre-plan. Like we know we have to do it. So if we both wake up and we're like, oh, who's going to do the dishes? And then there's this expectation that the other person is going to do, sh- do the dishes because I got you know too much going on or vice versa. And then that creates stress. And then that builds for the rest of the day. That flows in the other things that we're doing. And then that, or if we ended up having to do it, we didn't expect to, then that puts us behind. It's all these things that just, we don't realize the cascade effect that we have. Yeah. But just pre-planning ahead not only eliminates that cascade effect, but it also does something even more important. It provides that extra sense of love and care and connection to know like, hey, partner, I've got you. And I'm gonna do this for you and with you and for us. And you know, next, and then like when I say it, then the next night you, you say, hey, I'm gonna do the dishes tomorrow. And then we feel loved, we feel safe, we feel supported in our relationship. And that's one less thing to be stressed about. And that's one more thing to be in success with. Yeah. I think it would be really awesome to understand from our community if maybe doing some podcasts over happiness in relationships yes, and talking about our relationship would that. ever be uh, something that would be beneficial to them. So we can put a poll out there yes, and seek to understand what would be beneficial and get just talk to us in the community we would love to hear about what would be beneficial specifically when it comes to relationship and happiness in relationships would that be something that would be beneficial yeah yeah and the comment below you know let us know because yeah that's uh, that would be fantastic to to hear like what what aspects in a relationship could you know might you be struggling with or that you know someone that is struggling with and really not sure, you know, hey, I think there's a really, you know, quick solution to this. I could really make a difference. And I'm sure after, you know, almost 10 years now, yes. you know, Amber and I have really gone through a lot. And, um, you know, I'm really fortunate to get to say 
uh, that we're nine, nine plus years into our honeymoon phase. Um, and so that's, that's a beautiful thing. Now I'm not, I'm saying it because you now we have moments. We do. We do. Um, and it's not, it's not without moments by any means, but the success of this relationship that we have is because we can effectively get through these things. We're not letting them, we're not getting over them or we're not talking about them at all. We're it's not like, suppressing them. Not suppressing them. Thank you. At all. We are, there are effective ways to lovingly share. And, uh, and so, yeah, I know this is, we're on a little bit of a tangent here, but yeah, <laughs> um, but, but I think it's, it's important a great to idea. understand yeah. like from a community as a whole, you know, we don't, we talk about it, but only on the surface yeah. and as a transparent couple, I mean, we're willing to share whatever will be beneficial for others. So yeah. we would love to talk about that. But I think right now it's important for us to wrap up and share the last tip. Yes. Would you like to, or do you want me to from that sciencey techie yeah, standpoint? Yeah, your, uh, uh, your master's in quantum sciences, I think, gives you a, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of uh, credit towards maybe <laughs> providing this one. I read a few books. That does not make me an expert. <laughs> so, well, um, I'm not a full expert <laughs> either, but I, you well, know. A master's kind of puts you into that area. So <laughs> lovingly, I would love for you to share from, from your expertise, my love. That would be wonderful. Well, it's what I, in studying in that field, um, it's something called the observer effect, right? And literally what it breaks down into is the fact that a system can change through no other means than simply being observed. No other functional part of it changes except it's being observed. And that's like the highest level definition, right? But it caused me to start to go, how does that apply in my own life? That's my consistent practice is like, hmm, that's interesting. How does that apply in my life? And so I started asking myself, when it comes to my own happiness, how does the observer effect impact me? And then I realized when I start observing mindfully my own behavior in my own life surroundings, that's all I need to do sometimes for things to change mm. and change for the better. It's not like I need to take a ton of action. I simply need to be mindful and observe, especially when it came to fear and self-doubt. Because when I started looking my fears directly in the eye and not kind of, oh no, I don't want to, I don't want to look there. I don't want to look at why I have self-doubt. I don't want to look at why I'm afraid of that. I just want to like, oh, that feels icky. Instead, I'm like, huh, yeah, I'm afraid of tunnels. I don't know why I'm afraid of tunnels, but I'm afraid of tunnels. Isn't that interesting? Suddenly, I stopped being afraid of tunnels. And it was the strangest thing, but it was the observer effect. And so for me, tip number five, and it was such an easy, like I started this out and I didn't do this consistently throughout all of the tips, but like when it comes to an easy to apply on a scale of one to 10, this one is like a one. Being willing to just mindfully observe something in your, inner world or your outer world and then see changes as a result is pretty easy and you start to notice the positives a lot more that way too so it's pretty incredible agreed agreed change can feel overwhelming and that's why this last tip is so essential to moving from success from stress to success yes it it really is and so it's, it's funny how just something so, so small can make such an impact. Yeah. And I'll make sure that we also put links out there so you can get the more science-y yeah. uh, understanding, especially in the physics arena around the observer effect, because I personally find it fascinating. I'm also a huge nerd, so I own that part of me. 
but it is I love that really part of you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, it is really fascinating. And then when you do start to apply it in your own, like, what does this mean for me? Mm-hmm. And you start to realize that yes, everything is a system when you think about it, including my own biological system, my own mental system, my own mental framework. It's all a system. So how does just being an observation of that system begin to change it? Mm. It's pretty incredible. It's a great question to end on right there. Yeah. (laughs) So it would, I would ask, how does being in witness of our podcast, how does just observing our podcast change you? Mm. And if it does, then liking and subscribing can definitely help us. Yes. (laughs) Awesome. We'll see everyone on the next one. Thank you.